So yeah, welcome everyone. And uh, uh, also last week, I think Samuel had posted on the stream page uh, and Tarun has replied to that. So that's good. Uh, I haven't been able to, you know, respond to it, uh, Samuel, sorry about that. Uh, but yes, I, I will also share my thoughts um, on the questions that you've posted on the stream page. So we'll do that. Uh, today for our study, we will get back to the APC publication, The House of God. And uh, we were, we had completed the army of God in the last class. We'll do the previous chapter. The chapter before that is the pillar of truth. So we could go to that one first and then uh, we will touch on the next subject in line, which would be the side of Christ. So the pillar of truth. Uh, so the pillar of truth is, um, um, you know, basically it's talking about the standard that the church sets with regard to um, everything pertaining to life. So it it these are issues that matter to the church, and these are issues that also matter to uh, the world outside. So you know, we look at that. But before we get into it, I think. Um, as we usually do, we'll commit this time to the Lord, ask him to lead us. So uh, if one of us can pray uh, to submit this time, that would be great. Anyone? Okay, uh, how about Rose? Rose, uh, are you able to pray? Uh, is it too, is the time? Yes, Pastor. Yes, yes, Rose. Please go ahead. Okay. Father in heaven, all glory, praise, and honor to you. Thank you for another space in time when we can learn more about you. Father, help us settle in this moment so we may receive what you have willed to reveal to us. We commit this hour to you, Father. Open our eyes, open our ears, and open our hearts. Father, guide Pastor Nancy through the words that she says. May you empower her with your spirit and reveal to us, Father, and let them be rooted in our hearts from this day on. Father, in this season of your teaching, help us ask in your name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and the help of your most Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you. Thank you, Rose. Yeah. Okay, so uh, yes, we'll talk about the church as the pillar of truth. Uh, while Paul wrote to Timothy, uh, he talked about the church as the house of God. And, you know, we've already looked at that, the house of God. You should know how you must conduct yourself in the house of God. But he uses certain other descriptors as well. So in 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 15, uh, he says that the church is the house of God, but the church is also the church of the living God, the church of the living God, where, where God dwells. And he says that the church is the pillar and the ground of truth. So in other words, it's like saying that uh, the church is you know, it has strength of its own and it's able to stand. So when we look at pillars, uh, you know, maybe famous pillars um, in the world, we look look at all these, um, uh, uh, what, what can I say? Like they, they kind of signify something, they signify strength. Uh, and we look up to those structures and we say, oh, look at that pillar, you know, it stood despite um, all the calamities that came upon the land or, you know, something to signify something. You know, people erect 
uh, pillars and uh, that talks about strength that talks about what that place stands for or what those people stood for so in the same way the church is supposed to be um that pillar that uh, stands firm in the midst of chaos and at the same time we are told that the pillar uh, uh, has to do with truth pillar and ground of truth so uh, in other words the church has to not only be strong but at the same time the church needs to be uh, one that has a standard one that has a standard which cannot be uh, diluted by the world around it so the church is supposed to be the pillar and the ground of truth upholding the standards of god's word upholding the standards of god's wisdom so that is the responsibility and the function of the church so again when i say church it has to do with the global body of christ it has to do with um, the local congregations you know that uh, exist around the world so every congregation must stand up for the truth of god's word now we may ask you know truth rega regarding what truth regarding any and every subject that matters to mankind so as long as the church remains that pillar or you know upholder in other words it, it remains an upholder of the truth of god's word uh, the darkness in the world because of wickedness sin um, uh, and uh, uh, the untruth deception that the enemy speaks into the minds of people you know uh, it's like the church can shine the light and the darkness will retreat Uh, and so we have to recognize that we are the upholders of the truth we must never compromise on the truth of god's word so we'll try and break this down and you know see how uh, this is how we can use this practically okay um yeah so jesus he he said that uh, the word of god the word of god is the truth uh, so when it comes to uh, you know preaching the word of god we must yes uphold it uh, we must preach it unashamedly we must um, be uncompromising about the truth of god's word and at the same time you know uh, make sure that we share it in such a way uh, that we don't offend people so our commitment to god's word is very very important as a church body uh, and you know when when we say truth uh, now within the church setting and the church congregation we would uh, be concerned about the doctrine what what do we believe we would be concerned about the things pertaining to faith pertaining to our spiritual walk pertaining to spiritual maturity so the local church has to be committed to the truth of god's word so uh, as long as you know we are striving to be aligned to what the bible says you know we will keep on that straight path we will keep on that right track and keep moving forward and that's a commitment that's a commitment to stay aligned to god's word which is required by every believer which is required um of every church which is required of you know, the leadership of all churches so that's a commitment that we have to make now it's easy for us you know when um uh, when uh, how do i say this depending on the the situation right depending on what the people want to hear uh we we could bend and we could preach for convenience okay and that's easy that's easy to do however even through those challenging times you know even through the difficult times it's important for us to um stand on god's word it's important for us to preach what god's word has to say uh so uh, again you know we'll we'll come to the examples later uh, we'll just cover whatever uh, our uh, topic here has 
Okay? So we must uphold the truth. We must be uncompromising. We must be committed to stay aligned to the truth of God's word regarding every subject, every topic. Then we must also raise up people who are upholders of the truth. So when Jesus prayed for um, the disciples, right? He prayed for the disciples. Um, he said, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. So sanctify them by your, by your truth simply means that everyone who heard Jesus, his disciples, he wanted them uh, to have the same standards as him. And he knew that it's only God's word which is able to work in our hearts and convict us. If we are carrying, um, you know, alternate standards, the sanctification comes by the power of God's word. When we see that, oh, okay, this is what God's word says. And we, we've seen that in the preachings of Jesus, uh, he always uh, gave higher standards as compared to what the Pharisees were teaching in those times. So when he spoke the word, that's when people heard it and they were able to respond to the truth of God's word. And that word carried power uh, to cleanse their hearts, to convict their hearts. So uh, Jesus, talking about his disciples, he says this, he prays this to God and says, Lord, let the word, let the truth sanctify the disciples. Uh, and it's true for us as well. We are um, many generations after the disciples who lived you know, um, with Jesus, but still it is the truth of God's word which is able to sanctify us. So when we talk about being sanctified, sanctified by the truth, again, is basically aligning ourselves, cleansing our hearts and bringing our hearts to a position where we are holding on to what is right by God's word. So we do have to be um, sanctified. And the truth, right? the truth will be imparted, it will be planted in uh, the hearts of believers, if the leadership is committed to preaching the truth, you know, um, or let's say not just preaching uh, on Sundays, but making the truth available to the people and uh, just giving them the truth, you know, time and again, giving them the truth of God's word. So when pastors, let's say, impart God's word, you know, time and again, they uh, impart undiluted, uncompromised, clear, and complete word of God. So week after week, this is the kind of input the people get. This is the kind of uh, input that goes in continually. So not necessarily week after week. You know, now we have the privilege of uh, the internet. So we can provide access to uh, publications. We can provide access to sermons. Uh, sermon notes. So there is greater opportunity for exposure to God's word. So leadership uh, must take it up, you know, first of all, to examine God's word well, to preach God's word and to impart it, impart it to the people with every given opportunity. So what happens, you know, the, the word begins to work in the lives of the people. So the way Jesus said, sanctify them by your word, your word is truth. People will keep receiving the standard of God's word. Time and again, when we speak, okay, let's say, for example, um, we are born of God. We overcome the world. This is our victory, even our faith. So that's a statement of victory. Now, when that is taught to the congregation, that is taught to God's people as the truth. So what does God say? God says that we are overcomers. But time and again, when that truth is preached, what happens? Even the uh, believers who uh, maybe fairly new, they don't understand who they are in Christ. Over a period of time, they align themselves to the truth of God's word. That, hey, you know, I am an overcomer. I can overcome with the faith that I have in Christ Jesus. So what's happening? There is a sanctification. There is a renewing. There is uh, like a reconstruction of what what people believe. So, and that reconstruction is based on God's word. Uh, it's also based on the response that every individual has to God's word. So, uh, the responsibility of the 
leadership, however, is to examine God's word, you know, be clear that this is what the truth of God's word says, preach that uncompromisingly in a clear way, uh, and then, you know, just, just put it out there and let the word do its work. And the word does the work of sanctification. In other places, when we study about the word of God, we see the word is like water. Jesus says, uh, uh, or Jesus will cleanse the church. He will cleanse the bride. How is he going to do that? With the water, washing of water, which is the word of God. So through the word of God, that preparation happens, that cleansing happens, that sanctification happens, and uh, people's hearts and lives can be aligned to the truth of God's word. So uh, it's very, very important for the truth to be preached and for it to be preached in such a way that people are able to uh, understand it and apply it in their uh, everyday lives. So sanctification will happen through the word of God. Okay. Um, yeah, we must also be very careful, um, uh, you know, not to let the word get diluted. So there are, you know, several uh, scriptures again over here. Mm, uh, John 17, 16 says, they are not of the world just as I am not of the world. So Jesus recognized that there is a life to be lived here on the earth, uh, which is heavenly. Okay. And it must, it must not be tainted by, and there's a whole list of things, you know, the work of the flesh, the the worldliness which is around us, um, the, the temptations that the evil one brings, so many things can influence us. But we have to live that life, as Jesus said, I am from above. We have to live that life from above here on the earth. So uh, we cannot afford to compromise our standards in any way. And we are the ones who have to show that light. Um, we are the ones who have to show... Uh, that standard of living to the people around us. Now, if we compromise, if we compromise, then you know that will be uh, there'll be no difference. The people of the world hold the same standards as us. Okay, uh, and uh, you know that will be a very sad state of affairs. Uh, and as Jesus said, you know the salt loses its taste. What what use it is it for? It's just good to be thrown underfoot so and trampled it's good to be thrown and trampled underfoot by men so basically he's saying that something that's supposed to have flavor something that's supposed to influence if it does not do it then it is useless and in the same way we have a calling we have we have been called as you know the royal you know, priesthood holy nation we are here to release the kingdom the kingdom which is within us we are here to release it to the world around us. But if we are walking in compromise, it's very sad because then, you know, we are uh, of God. We do belong to the kingdom. We do belong to the church. We do attend church. But it doesn't make any difference, you know, to the, uh, to the world. It doesn't make any difference to the society. It's the same. Like if we compare our lives with someone else, who lives in the world, it would be the same thing. So uh, a life without compromise is what God is calling for. Uh, and we must never compromise. There will be a lot of things that will uh, try to rock our boats in different seasons of our lives. But through it all, you know, we must hold on. We must hold on to uh, what God's word says. So simply, uh, we could just talk about young people, right? Um, so when we equip young people, when we um, train young people, we could talk to them about godly standards. All right? uh, but what if we talk to them about godly standards and uh, they get offended? Okay, uh, We can talk to them about uh, values. We can talk to them about um, how to have integrity like Joseph or how to um, uh, be different dare to be different in uh, the, the setting, right? Wherever they are, maybe uh, they are attending college and there's all kinds of things that they see around us, see around them. 
uh, like Daniel, we can encourage them and say, hey, you can dare to be different because you belong to God, you worship God. So you know, uh, when it comes to your attitudes, you, you, can, um, you can be committed to your studies, you can be respectful towards uh, your uh, teachers, you know, you can be honoring of everyone, your friends, your colleagues, uh, you can aim for excellence. Then, you know, when it comes to relationships, we can guide them and say, okay, you know, uh, uh, walk, um, walk holy before God. You know, don't go by the standards of the world. The world will say, yeah, you can do whatever you want, but uh, that's not how God wants us to live our lives. So we can teach things like this, uh, but what happens is that it may not go down well sometimes. Okay, so what if you preach in this way and young people get offended? Let's say uh, there are uh, like 30 young people who, who start attending uh, the meetings at church. And then, you know, we are equipping them uh, with the truth of God's word. We tell them, like, this is what God's standard is. So, you know, you pursue God when you are young. In the days of your youth, you pursue God. Be passionate about God. You know, draw closer to God uh, and uh, learn godly values. Now, some young people may say, hey, I, I just can't relate to this. And then... You know, drop out. So if, for example, let's say out of the 30, 15 of them decide this is too difficult for me. You know, I can't live by these standards and I'm quitting. I will uh, quit this youth group. Maybe I'll go find another youth group which doesn't talk about, you know, these things, but maybe it just has some activities that I can engage in and, uh, you know, feel good about. So what would we do? It's, it's challenging. If we preach things that are easy for the people that uh, people want to hear, that will not rock their boat, which will not challenge them, you know, we may see a you know, larger number of people attending. But the question is, what are we after? What is the goal? Are we there to disciple people the way Jesus discipled them by the truth of God's word, the uncompromising word of God being taught to them? Whether, of course, we do our part to not offend them in our uh, way of communicating. But having done that, you know, there's, we really can't do uh, more than that if people get offended by the truth. Because sometimes the truth does offend people. No, we still have to stick to the truth of God's word. We, we, uh, and, and that is something, you know, we, that conviction, that commitment, that alignment uh, is something that we must uh, uh, sort of let God bring us to that place where we are uncompromising. No matter what people want to hear, you know, we, we will not move from what the truth is and we will continue to preach what God wants us to preach and teach. Because if we don't, what will happen? No question of sanctification. We want to see people sanctified by the truth of God's word. And if we don't preach the word, what is it that will work in people's lives? Nothing. So how can we have results? How can we have people who live as the salt and light in the world out there? It's not possible. The true word of God, you know, that, that is what will work. That's the agent which will release its power, which will do the cleansing work. Uh, and uh, the way Jesus wanted us to walk here on the earth, as he is, so we are. As he was, so we are in this world. So um, we are here to disciple people uh, according to God's word so that they can live like Jesus. We live in the world, but we are not of the world. We carry the standards of God. We carry the standards of heaven while we live here. So uh, compromise. There, there can be so many other scenarios where um, we may be forced to preach nice and soft. But we must never come under pressure. Right? We must never come under pressure. Now, uh, I mean, there, there are so many things. What if you know, James writes that don't be partial, even if there's somebody in church who is rich and influential, and then you see a person coming in who is not rich. 
don't make a distinction because of the status of individuals now it is possible right for for us to come under pressure maybe we are serving in church and we are in this place of incredible need and uh, a particular individual starts coming to church and they are very influential they help us out in uh, our time of need so they are able to give the necessary finances uh, or make the required connections now what if this person seeks prominence in the church gatherings or what if this person insists that okay pastor you've been preaching too long about the holy spirit how about you preach um about um, you know something else i don't know uh, prayer how, how about you preach about prayer or how about you preach about uh, prosperity okay now it's it's quite challenging in real life scenario you know we come uh, across all these pressures are we going to say no to this person or how are we going to explain to this person what if they get offended with us what if they leave the church what if we don't get uh, you know the uh, the support that we were getting from them uh, you know we will we will be left stranded and uh, this wonderful opportunity and help that we've got through this individual we lose it so you now how about uh, given a little bit to this influential individual so you know there are so many pressures that that one could come under even when you're teaching a bible study there can be so many pressures right that you must teach on this or you must teach it this way but we must be very careful not to compromise okay if i lose if this person gets offended and they don't want to attend so be it right i can't change what i'm saying to make this person comfortable uh, or uh, similarly you know holy spirit holy spirit baptism sometimes when we talk about things like this again so many people may not like it so are we going to stop talking about certain things no we'll we'll work on how to communicate it in the nicest possible way uh, but never dilute the word of god never dilute the word of god okay uh, and uh, uh, talking about compromise if you remember i think it was uh, it was yeah early earlier in this publication itself we talked about peddling the word of god where uh, what we speak what we preach may sound very much like the word of god but the the standards uh, being set are not godly now for example uh, the other day we talked about uh, fathers and mothers right fathers and mothers it's a biblical truth uh, it's there in god's word but if it is taught in a way the truth is taught okay? there are examples from the bible there's an elijah elish there's an elijah for elisha there is a moses for joshua you know uh, the disciples had jesus uh, and, and you know god honors the fathers uh, god honors the uh, you know the the pious in years uh, and the blessing goes to the pioneers all this is all but we like to say what we want to say okay and that's the danger there's always that danger we can use the word to say whatever we want to say right so if we want to say that okay uh the the fathers in the house or the mothers in the house have the right to tell you what to do or you know basically control uh, over the lives of the people it's possible to say that with the word of god okay so what's actually happening you know it's like diluting the truth it's like manipulating the truth we're preaching from the word but what is being spoken it's not rightly divided it's not rightly divided and the, there's a compromise right there okay. or when it comes to prosperity okay there there yes does the bible talk about prosperity does the bible talk about um us being blessed by god uh, in the spiritual as well as in the 
physical yes the bible definitely talks about that and every believer can expect it but we know that uh, there have been abuses right of this this uh, um, teaching on prosperity so we could use that right? we could use that to say that you know uh, uh, if you want a blessing then you need to give me a certain amount of money uh, only then god will bless you we've seen we've seen things like this happen in the past so what's happening the word is being presented but the word is being manipulated the word is being peddled it's being diluted right uh, and it's being presented to the people to lead them in a way which is not necessarily one of worship to god so you know, that uh, is something that we have to be very very careful about and especially those of us who are teaching god's word right the intention the motivation um we have to be very careful because if you are trying to say something that the word is not saying you know the the uh, like god's word says right like those of us who handle god's word we will be judged okay uh, so there is that accountability that that we must maintain so within ourselves we have to be sure okay what am i saying is what is the truth that i'm putting forward is, is that what god's word says so if what i believe is contrary to what god's word says you know i have to be in a position to correct myself uh, and and say oh okay fine you know i thought this is what god's word is saying but you know not really so i'm going to change my standard and align it to god's word so personally as individuals to align ourselves to god's word and then you know when we minister the truth of god's word we must be careful to teach the truth we must be careful to teach the truth because what's happening you know it's that word which is working in the hearts and the lives of the people and it will do its work it will do its work of sanctification you know uh, we we saw how uh, paul wrote to paul told the ephesians the word of god is able to build you up so the word of god will edify the word of god will strengthen god's people to live uh, on the earth and maintain the standards of god's word so uh so far i think you know we we all understand you know, what what is being said uh, and uh, you know how the word must be preached in the church how the word must be upheld even in the face of uh, compromise now uh, one of the uh, the challenging times that we see in the early church is when the gentiles were forced to follow the traditions of the jews you know at that time uh, you find the apostles you know uh, led by peter and barnabas they take the matter to the jerusalem council but you see the passion that they have to maintain the truth okay so no compromise so they're very careful to set the right standards uh, and, and even like in church history from time to time uh, there can be wrong teachings error right compromise standards uh, that are being taught but as long as we hold on to god's word and you know we we uh, are passionate about it so in other words it's not just to know the truth and live the truth but also to like uphold it we uphold it um you know that is necessary in the body of christ that is necessary in the body of christ so um yeah so let's be renewed to the truth of god's word uh, things pertaining to uh, our spiritual walk with god and our uh, uh, godly standards for life so when we say godly standards for life we we mean you know things to do with uh, it could be things to do with marriage you know god's principles uh, it could be things to do with our work life you know wisdom principles uh, that we can follow from god's word applicable to our career applicable to the business right uh, or um, god's truth regarding finances how to manage finances what is a godly way of managing finances you know so on and so forth so the truth of god's word in every matter and we become upholders of the truth the spiritual aspects as well as the practical aspects okay now that is kind of you know uh, simple and we all understand it now coming to uh, response 
the the response of the church to current issues um uh, now in this area uh i think a lot of churches don't really take a stand uh maybe because you know they haven't been able to rightly divide god's word and they don't want to get into uh, you know a sticky situation or they know the truth but they don't know how to communicate it okay. so there are so many current issues like uh, early on this year we saw this whole thing about uh, uh, you know uh, equality uh, the uh, uh, equality equity uh, how there must be no discrimination right and uh, something like a movement was was going on in parts of the world uh, so what is the stand of the church regarding that we must not be afraid to uh, talk on these subjects and yes it is difficult it is difficult to give a response um, it's going to take a lot of study actually to be able to respond on current issues but uh, we must try and we must uh, you know research and be able to present the right standard of god's word so there are so many challenges and one of which is your civil disobedience uh, which you know has been posted on the screen there uh, so yeah it could be civil disobedience or, and i'm yet to answer in fact uh, the other day there was a question about ivf uh, and uh, you know what about the um, wasted fertilized uh, fertilized eggs so these are questions that people have and we must be able to answer these questions uh, and if we are able to present clear precise answers it will help people um, do the right thing if we are unclear okay then people wouldn't know how to go about you know that that particular aspect so there's a scripture first corinthians 14 and verse 8 it says for if the trumpet makes an uncertain sound who will prepare for battle so uncertain sound is presenting our thoughts but not necessarily uh, you know in in a in a way that guides people on what should be done now for example you know uh, persecution how do i deal with persecution things are happening as opposition uh, uh, and uh, it's difficult to minister is it okay to try and escape persecution you know am i still a godly person if i'm trying to keep my family safe questions like this there can be so many things bothering people things about you know uh, how should i respect my government so there are these 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 policies that are being um, you know uh, given out so is it okay should i should i continue to to listen to what the government says like even if it causes me to uh, dishonor god so people are asking a lot of questions but the fact is that if we spend time in god's word and we study god's word you know there are answers there are answers to to uh, you know i i i wouldn't say all because maybe there are some subjects that you know god may uh, god god may not want to explain about certain matters right but whatever has been revealed whatever has been revealed whatever needs to be revealed to man that is provided for us in scripture so we can study god's word and uh, do our best to provide clear and precise answers Okay. and of course it's not easy it's not easy at all to be able to do this uh, but it's possible and uh, you know we need a commitment to do that so this this is what uh, this the subject is about uh, and because you know the church is called as the pillar and the ground of truth uh, we must make sure that we uphold god's truth in every way so there are some practical aspects here that we are coming to okay samuel have you heard the movement that the covid vaccine is the mark of the beast huh? yeah yes uh, samuel i have heard i have heard this mm, uh 
yeah but uh, you have uh, eschatology this semester the the end times are you doing that course no oh next oh yes 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 next semester next semester okay so um uh, in that course the the mark of the beast is explained okay uh yeah so i i think uh, i will again not get into it but when we when we study right what the mark of the beast could be uh, we can very well say that the covid vaccine has nothing to do with it okay so the covid vaccine is just uh, uh, a solution for the spreading pandemic uh, and uh, you know that's how it should be treated and you know it's not the mark of the beast right so uh, yeah i i will leave it at that but let me see if uh, i can just post um, something from that uh, the end times class on the stream later okay so, but yes i have heard this uh, a lot of people are saying that the covid vaccine is the mark of the beast yeah okay so uh, coming here to the sections on uh, the practical aspect so the preaching from the pulpit should be sound strong and uncompromising so always place the truth of god's word for the standards that it carries before people so what happens then when we keep for example integrity if we keep preaching about integrity from god's word and we say you know uh, jesus said and the way the truth and the life that you know he he himself is the truth so uh, we must never rely on uh, compromises we must never rely on lies and then you know there are many many uh, examples that like you could use god's word to teach about the truth over a period of time the people will start aligning themselves to what is being preached from the pulpit so that is the result right of uh, what is being delivered from the pulpit so if the truth is being delivered and it is sound it is strong it is uncompromising that's the result which we will get but if it is compromised right, over a period of time it's going to affect the lives of the people so if we don't teach integrity the church could be growing we could be moving in you know the the supernatural things uh, and all of that but there can be wrong standards of living among the people and they don't feel bad about it because the truth has not been preached to them right from the pulpit so sound strong uncompromising doctrine has to be taught from god's word and let's say even if people are not walking in it right now not to worry about it for example you know we could uh, look at the corinthian church and in the corinthian church what happened they were a highly spiritual church so that's why paul addresses matters about the spiritual gifts you know, he tells them how to use the spiritual gifts uh, you know how to flow in them how to bless one another and all of that but if you look at the passages that follow he is addressing lifestyle issues he's addressing um you know uh, uh, the matters of holiness he's addressing you know things like you have strife among you you have division among you so how is paul trying to address matters in the lives of believers through the word so he first presents the word and says look you know you you are the temple of god so uh hold your vessel on the red leaf so he goes by the standards of god's word and he preaches the sound doctrine to them so when we place sound doctrine before people over a period of time the change will come so what change do we want to see you know are are, are, are people walking in sin then preach about righteousness preach about holiness right preach about um, you know standards integrity thing like that so whatever we want to see happen in the lives of the people we have to present the word pertaining to that and always hold on to sound strong and uncompromising word of god 
then from time to time address real life issues uh, when we talked about the pillars while planning our pulpit uh, calendar we said that um, we can address matters that have to do with the spiritual life of the believer uh, their walk with god then the second thing is uh, ministry how to minister so there must be some teaching on that which will equip the believer to serve god and the third one we said is life skills okay. so there are real life issues that people have um which we must talk about because uh, yeah if if we don't touch on those matters for example marriage and family now a lot of believers right they are not equipped for marriage maybe they come from a very good home uh, where they know what you know how fa uh, family must be run or they come from a background where they've had a lot of struggles but the church can equip we can still speak about you know practical things pertaining to uh, uh, the marriage relationship building a home so then what happens right the people are not just you know good at praying and prophesying and you know all of those things but they know how to uh, set goals for the family how to strengthen the marriage relationship how to take care of the family how to lead the family you know, practical things like that so there are several real life issues um, there can be problems right the maybe communication in marriage i remember there was one one sermon on that uh, if i'm not wrong from the marriage and family series so problems that people might be facing in their marriage or their uh, career so pick up those specific things and address it from the pulpit and that will really be helpful uh, and then addressing difficult issues you know address it with the love of god because uh, it's very uh, again easy for us to be all fiery at the pulpit and just you know bang people with the word of god uh, that once people listen to it they'll feel like oh i'm such a wretched sinner i should never even think of coming back to church you know forget about god's presence i can't enter god's presence so when when we bang them with god's word you know, sometimes with like without love it will not produce the fruit that it is supposed to produce so speak the truth but in love speak the truth in love uh then encourage believers to live by the truth you know, they hear the truth but encourage them to live by the truth help them to engage meaningfully in society maybe matters of justice okay. so uh when we set that standard from god's word and we talk about it about equality and things like that our believers will take that those standards into the world they live by those standards maybe one or two of them are passionate about justice they might start off you know uh, i i don't know maybe an ngo or engage in uh, some sort of social action and bring about a very significant change for the society so we encourage them whatever passions god has put on their hearts we encourage them we we uh, support them to engage society in meaningful ways um then engage encourage believers to take opportunities to bring kingdom values and kingdom perspectives in public places and forums so uh, i'll just stop with this example and we come back and continue uh, campus elevates is a program uh, that we used to have for schools and colleges schools as in um uh, the 11th and 12th standard uh, and then you know uh, colleges we would go to college campuses and talk about things that matter to young people you know things like self esteem uh, things like um, healthy relationships things like um, uh, you know good habits uh, good habits uh, to be successful um, you know how to overcome anxiety how to overcome fear um uh so i mean just some examples here for us so this format or you know this particular program through this we were able to bring kingdom values to young people and the the uh, great part is that 
in even in christian colleges you know these days you don't have like everybody is not christian so uh, you may have about 10% or something 10 20% of uh, the young people who actually believe in god but most of them don't and still like salt you know, we we are able to preserve uh, the value systems in people's lives by proclaiming the word and again uh, we were very careful about the way the word was presented where we don't offend we were very um, those who were speakers uh, uh, in this elevate program we would brief them and tell them you know please do not talk about other religions please or do not uh, talk condescendingly about other religions um, you know be uplifting encouraging so we used to kind of give them the guidelines of what they what they must follow uh and everything that was preached you know i don't remember of one time where we got a negative feedback it was always positive young people were happy to receive uh what was being shared with them in fact teachers used to call us up and say okay exams are going on and the children are very scared why can't you come and have a prayer for us right so they they were truly blessed by what we were doing but we were making an impact not just in the lives of uh believers christians but god in principles are applicable helpful for everyone so we were able to bring it out to people uh, of different religions and cultures as well so just one example but i know so there are many other initiatives the workplace initiative uh, uh, you know uh, then uh, what is uh, yeah so you know different initiatives uh, that we can have um, i don't know if there there was something tarun where uh, people from apc would talk in different forums did we have that did we have something like that just trying to recall forums uh, no we had the uh, workplace ministry christian mm-hmm. professional conference we used to do elevates and the catalyst was there yeah, catalyst yes 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 thank you thank you uh, so catalyst uh, is an exclusive school program so it's for kids till 10th standard um again you know some we had some christian schools uh, that gave us permission but not all the students were christian and yet they were open for us to teach principles from scripture so it was a wonderful opportunity uh, so in this way these are some examples uh, we can engage society we can bring kingdom values to uh, the world around us okay so with that we will just go in for a break we'll come back and i i know that uh, you know there's different things to discuss after that so yeah let's do that we'll come back in 10 minutes it's 9:53 so let's uh, come back at 10:03 and we'll continue thank you